In this tutorial, we'll be going over the sample player, which was introduced in Mix Emergency 2.7. The sample player allows you to display video or graphics on top of your Mix Emergency video channels. It's highly recommended that you convert your videos to the HAP codec if you plan to use the sample player, because layering video is highly CPU intensive. The HAP codec uses GPU acceleration to free up your CPU. We'll be going over the sample player settings interface, presets, and how to layer visuals and trigger one-shot visual hits for live improvisation. Since triggering samples doesn't affect Serato song playback, you can use other software with the sample player to load sounds. To load the sample player, just click on this icon right here in the Mix Emergency interface. If you go to your finder, you can drag any media file directly into the sample player, into any of the slots here. So you trigger samples by clicking on the thumbnail, and this first button here just stops playback. The middle button is for ejecting your clip, so let me just drag that back into the slot. And the button on the right is for sample settings. So let's get into an example. I'm going to load up a new visual here, and it's a longer playing loop. You'll want to keep this in mind. The loaded visuals in your sample slots have a layer hierarchy. The visual to the right always sits on top of the sample to its left. So think of the far right sample as the top layer in the hierarchy. And if I trigger the sample, you'll notice that it sits on top of the sample to its left. And stopping the right sample will reveal the sample to its left. And since no blending modes are active, we're also covering up the main output. Let's go over the sample settings to customize how our samples can become more cohesive with our main output. So here in our sample settings, you'll notice that there's a play mode button and there's three different play modes. The first one is playthrough. And when you trigger your sample, it'll play from the start to the end of the video. The middle button is play while held. And what this does is when you trigger your sample, you'll have to hold it down in order for it to play all the way through. Last is play and stop. So you trigger it once to start the playback of your sample and trigger it again to stop. So you can use this mode as a way to cut off the playback, especially if you're triggering a visual that's longer. So I'm gonna go back to the playthrough mode. To have our sample blend with our currently loaded video, we need to adjust the blend mode. And do that by clicking this drop down menu right here. And since my sample is an object, I'll choose Lighten so that it stands out better on top of the visual that's loaded. So now when I trigger it, you'll notice that it just sits on top of the background instead of covering it. If your sample has an alpha channel, you'll want to click on this alpha blending checkbox to display visuals with alpha channels correctly. If you click on the loop checkbox on the top left here, the sample that you trigger will just loop endlessly. So while this is looping, let's talk about play rate. And this adjusts the speed of the playback with two options. The first is pitch, and it uses the knob to the right here to adjust the speed. You can also map this to a MIDI controller. So the far right value of the pitch is positive 8%, while the far left is negative 8%. So the other way to adjust playback speed is to use sync to BPM mode. And what this does is use the BPM of the currently playing song once the sample is triggered. So to give you an example, I'll load up the audio that I have playing from Serato DJ, which is also linked up to Mix Emergency. And you'll see that this track here on the left side is playing at 104 BPM. So if I go back to the sample, it's now playing back according to the BPM and being triggered in sync with the currently playing song. Now let's talk about override BPM. And when you check this, it allows you to manually set the BPM by inputting whatever value you want here on the right. So this should take precedence over any of the play rate modes. So I'll go back to pitch and for this next example, I'm gonna load up a longer playing visual to show you how the next setting works. I'm gonna stop the sample here and load up a longer playing visual in a different bank here. 
So if we go back into our sample settings, there's this play from option. And if you choose start, what it does is when you trigger a sample, it plays from the beginning of the video. If you choose time, what it does is lets you input a value in seconds, which specifies how many seconds into the video that it should start playback. I input five seconds, and when I trigger the sample, you'll notice that it plays from this point, which is five seconds in. And when I play from start, you'll notice that when it's triggered, it'll play from the beginning. The next sample setting we'll go over is override duration. And when this is enabled, your sample will play for however long you set this value to, which is in seconds. I've set it to three, so when I trigger this sample, it'll stop in three seconds. Just like this. Even if a video is set to loop, it'll stop at whatever duration is set. Right, I'm going to go back to the one-shot visuals on bank A. The remaining sample settings are three grids that control scale, X, and Y position. The grids are used to animate the values. So we'll start on duration mode for all these grids. And this mode lets us animate values over the length of time. Just think of the grid as a timeline of your visual. So the far left is the start point and the far right is the end point. So it's basically how long it takes for your sample to play. Here's how the scale grid works. Add a point to the left side by right clicking and adding a point. And we'll move this point to the bottom left. And once we trigger it, you'll see that the scale starts at 25% and goes to 100%. And you can see these values here once you drag the points. So let's drag this point to the top left now. And this point is set to 400%. So when we trigger the sample, it starts at 400%, goes to 100 and stays there. Let's go ahead and add a point to the right side by right clicking. And we'll drag this one down to the bottom right. Now when we trigger this, it scales up and down. So let's move the right point all the way to the top right. And this ends up being somewhat of a linear bounce. So let's go ahead and move this top left point to the bottom left. And let's just go ahead and keep this top right point the same. And now when we trigger this visual, it'll scale from small to very large. Let's move the right point down all the way to the bottom right. Now when we trigger it, it'll zoom up and then go back. All right, I'm going to reset this scale here. Let's talk about the X grid and how it works. It basically controls the left and right position of your sample once it's triggered. So I'm going to add a point to the left by right clicking. And I'll drag this point all the way up to the left. Now when you trigger the sample, it transitions from right to center. Now if I adjust the left point and bring it down to the bottom left, the triggered sample moves from left to center. So I'll reset the points here, and I'll add one to the right. Let's move this right point all the way up. Now when you trigger it, it stays in the center and then moves to the right at half duration. So let's go in and move the right point all the way down. And when you trigger the sample, it stays centered and then moves to the left at half its duration. Next, we'll add a point to the left side and place it all the way up. Now when we trigger it, you'll notice it comes in from the far right to the far left. Now if we adjust the points again and move the right point to the top right, the sample comes in from the far right, moves to the center and back. So next we'll move the left point all the way down and our sample comes in from the far left to the far right. Lastly, we'll move the right point all the way down 
and when it's triggered it'll move from the far left near the center and back. So let's reset the points on the X grid and talk about the Y grid. The Y grid moves up and down rather than left and right. Since it works the same way as the X grid I'll just show you one example. So I've added a point to the left and moved it to the bottom and the sample moves from the bottom to the center. Now I'll reset the points on the Y grid and I'm going to load up a different visual to show you how this next mode works. So let's go and trigger this visual. And you might have noticed that there is a mode drop down on the grids. And this other mode is beats mode. And what this does is synchronize your grid animations to the BPM of your music if it's linked to Serato. So I've got a track playing here in Serato DJ. And this is all synced up to Mix Emergency. And this is confirmed by the green light on the Mix Emergency window, which shows the link between Serato DJ and Mix Emergency. I'm going to go ahead and bring the volume back up so that you can listen to the audio track and see that the visual is in fact BPM synced and that the animations are moving according to the BPM. So in beats mode, when you trigger a sample, it'll animate your values over the number of beats set. So I'm going to move this point to the far left, and then I'll add a point to the far right and bring it up to 400%. And since we're in beats mode, you'll notice that it's animating from 100% to 400% on the scale. And this is on every beat. And since this is all BPM sync, no matter what the scale values are, It'll cycle through all the values depending on the number of beats set. If we set it to 4, the animation will happen over the course of 4 beats. So now you'll notice it's moving a bit slower because it's cycling through all the scale values over the course of 4 beats. Beat mode works the same way in the X and Y grids. So you can play around with those and see how they're affected when the animations are BPM synced. I'm going to go ahead and load up some new visuals here, just to change things up a bit. Next we'll get into the rest of the samples interface. You're given four different banks where you can store additional videos and samples. So I've got a few loaded here. And you can drag any of your media files to any of the slots on the banks. I'm going to load up two samples here. So this out label right here is your output. And right now it's set to M, which is main. But if we switch the output to A, your samples will play over the left video channel. And if you switch out to B, your samples will play over the right channel. So if you crossfade over to the right channel, it'll show up in your main output now. Depending on how you layer things, it might be a bit overwhelming visually. So what you can do is adjust the transparency by moving the mix knob. And this controls all of the samples combined and how they're displayed on top of your main output. Now I'll briefly go over presets and if you click on this button here in the mix emergency window it'll load up presets. On the right side there's a tab labeled SP which stands for sample player. And this is where you recall presets for the sample player. There are 12 presets per bank, and you can recall any of your presets by just clicking on the number on the left column, and save or trash presets by clicking on these buttons. So some of the general things you can do with the sample player are layer and loop visuals over your output, as seen right here in this example. This is a good way to add more visual interest to your sets. And you can also trigger animated logos easily this way. The sample player gives you easy access to any media you might have so that you can trigger at any time during your set. So if you have short burst or one shot visuals, you can use these to play along with music and create buildups in your set. Here's a quick example for you.
I've got more loaded in the other banks here. So the way I'm triggering these quickly is because I've set up MIDI controls. And you do this by clicking the MIDI button on the Mix Emergency window. And then click on one of your thumbnails and learn new control. And you can press any button on your controller to trigger any of the sample slots this way. Keep in mind that the sample player uses the same MIDI mapping on all banks. So no matter what bank you're on when you set your MIDI controls, those same buttons will always activate the same samples regardless of what bank it's on. Hope this gives you some ideas on how to use the sample player in your sets. It's a great feature that gives you the capability to layer visuals and create improvisational performance, especially if you have everything mapped to MIDI and are using one-shot visuals. On our website, there are some free loops and one-shot visuals encoded specifically for Mix Emergency using the HAP codec. Check these visuals out along with some of the other tutorials we have for Mix Emergency. Thanks for watching and hope you tune in to the next tutorial.